Good morning and welcome to our worship on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Nothing can keep our Redeemer from upholding his promised salvation except what he does for us. Let us begin our worship today with the opening hymn, God, Glory Be to God the Father, number 239. be to God the Father, <coughs> God the Son, glory be to God the Spirit, Jehovah three in one, glory, glory, while eternal ages run. Glory be to him who loved us, washed us from each spot and stain. Glory be to him who bought us, made us kings with him to reign. Glory, glory to the Lamb that once was slain. Glory to the King of angels, glory to the church's King. Glory to the King of nations, heaven and earth, your praises bring. Glory, glory to the King of glory, sing. Glory, blessing, praise eternal, thus the choir of angels sings. Honor, riches, our dominion, Thus its praise creation brings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high. Lord man, we
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Word of God begins this series of the first lesson in Exodus chapter 6. To a people who wanted to know who God was, he responded, I am who I am. In this lesson, he explains exactly what it means to be the Lord, the God of free and faithful love. Then God spoke to Moses, telling him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I was not known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land where they were residing as aliens. I certainly have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians have enslaved, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, tell the Israelites I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from being their slaves. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. You will know that I am the Lord your God, the one who brought you out from under the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land which I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. So far, we continue with Psalm 34 as you find it in your worship folders. To be his own. The second lesson continues the series from Romans, Romans chapter 11 today. 
Romans chapter 11 verses 25 to 27 is, remembers the covenant with Israel. And Isaiah prophesied it and God fulfilled it. So here Paul records a great doxology to fit for our Redeemer, the God. Listen. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how untraceable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his advisor? Or who has first given to God that he will be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. So far. Alleluia. Our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia. 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 Please rise for the gospel. The Gospel in Matthew chapter 16. Glory be to you, O Lord. One of those things that Jesus reminds us, who do people say the Son of Man is? Good question, right? Listen. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but you, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our hymn of the day is number 536, Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, the church's head.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to hear your word and gladly keep it. Amen. What is a confession? Well, we should know that confessing our sins is something that we need to know too. But what is Peter confessing at the time? But listen to some of these confessions, by the way. This is a dictionary quote. To make a confession can also mean to declare, disclose, or profess, to affirm, or pronounce something. So what's the confession of the time? Listen to what Jesus has been telling the disciples. And it's a continuation where they continue to grow up in telling Jesus exactly how important that is. So listen, let us confess our Christ clearly. That's a good reminder to us today. But in this particular part of it, our faith in the Lord is something too. Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we should be reminding ourselves that there are people today who claim to believe in Jesus, and those are those different denominations, some who believe that Jesus is a prophet, but he's not God, some who believe that Jesus is a God, not the true God, and some who believe that this guy is a God, this guy is a God, and his father was a human being before until he came up to be the God, etc., etc. And there are thousands of people who don't think that a belief and trust in the primary focus of Scripture on Jesus Christ our Lord is the most important thing of all. What is Scripture saying? Well, here's a good reminder to us today. I, I did have this... Um, biblical interpretation the only right way years ago. It was in 1996, I think, and I had a, a different copy of that, and somebody else, I gave it to them some time ago, so I got a new one now, and I still like it. But this is a good reminder by our professor at the time, David Kuski, and it's something that tells us how important it is to know exactly what Scripture understands for us because that's exactly what Jesus is saying to his disciples at the time. Listen to this question. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say the Son of Man is? Some Mormons don't believe in the true Jesus. Some Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the true Jesus. Some Muslims don't believe in the true Jesus either. What Jesus is saying this day, who do people say the Son of Man is? They said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah the prophets of the prophets. But then he said to the disciples at that time, but you, who do you say that I am. That's an emphasis at the time that Jesus was growing up his disciples. He wanted them to come to know, yeah, you should come to appreciate exactly what I've been telling you. For all of these months since that time, and that couple of years as well, but you, who do you say that I am? It's then Simon Peter, he's often one of the guys who says some of these things. And Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. They as Jews came to know that Jesus is also true God. And they also learned that he was also true man. That was a good time when Jesus was telling them these things. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood 
did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So we should know that maybe those three different denominations have different beliefs about Jesus, but then there are people today who might be saying, oh, he was a religious leader, he was a prophet, he was a great teacher, he might have been more like Buddha or Mohammed, maybe even Moses himself, is very much important. Was Moses more important than Jesus Christ? No. Were the prophets more important than Jesus Christ? Jeremiah was mentioned too. Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah. We should know that if we have faith and trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, those prophets are connected to Christ Jesus our Lord. Because they're telling us what scripture says in something like this. So that we can learn and grow up in our ability to appreciate exactly what Jesus is telling the disciples at the time. How important it comes to know that they need to put their faith and trust in our Lord and Savior. So listen to the second part of that too. And then he continues to say... And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So let us understand that confession of Jesus Christ our Lord very clearly and our confession of Jesus is something that is a good opportunity for us to appreciate some of these questions by the way when we should know that who we are who am I why am I here why are we here as Christians what if anything comes to this life well we know that we're not going to be in this life forever but we should know that Jesus Christ gives us that eternal life to look forward to. How do I ever get there at all? Well, only because Jesus Christ our Lord can do that for us. He wanted his disciples to come to know exactly what he was saying, how important it was that on this rock, Peter is called to be a rock. What he's basically saying is, yeah, he's got faith and trust in what Jesus is saying at that time. That we should have faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior, in our lives, in this time. Listen to some of these other things. Nothing more. Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus. Nothing less. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Nothing else. Thy works, not mine, O Lord. Do we have faith in Jesus? Yeah. We need to. We need to know what Peter's saying that time. What Jesus is telling the disciples then. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What are the keys of the kingdom of heaven? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The keys. When they're bound or when they're loosed. When Jesus gives us faith and trust and salvation in him, we're loosed. We can have forgiveness and hope and salvation. Because the people of this world, if they don't believe in Jesus Christ... They're not loosed. They're bound. They don't accept. They don't want to believe. Or they fall away from faith in Jesus Christ. That's exactly what Jesus is telling the disciples at that time. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. But then also listen to this final verse too. 
Then he commanded the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Did he mean that he was never going to tell them ever again to say that? No, that's not the point. He wants them to grow up and continue that process where they continue to grow and develop their ability to accept what he's been telling them in Scripture so often again and again and again. That ultimately you can see in this biblical Bible by the, or some of the biblical Bible portions of this in this, in this book. It goes through uh, kind of verses about 244. You want to learn how to do Bible interpretation in the only right way in our professor David Kuski at the seminary at that time? Have you ever seen this before? If you want to continue to know how important it is to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, it's a good example to understand what Scripture actually is emphasizing in the Bible itself. From Genesis through Revelation, a focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what do we do for ourselves in some of the communities of the time? Because our belief, our hope, our trust, our faith in our Lord and Savior is ultimately what only He can do for us. So when we come to appreciate who Jesus truly is, and what he's been saying, that he is the one true and only God. And he is also true man, 100% man and 100% God. And when he reminds us of how important it is that the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord is given to us in communion, or a reminder of what baptism is that he does for us, not what we can do for ourselves, let us appreciate what Scripture reminds us that Paul also comes to know, that Peter continues to develop his ability to appreciate exactly who he should be and what he should telling the other people of that time of how important it is to come to know who Jesus Christ, our Savior, truly is. Let it be a good day for us today and always. Amen. Please arise. We continue with the uh, song. In me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right and ignite your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Amen. We pray our daily prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray to the God of all knowledge and wisdom that the church may be renewed and strengthened for her mission. O oh Lord, you have revealed your good and gracious will to your people on earth. Forgive us for pursuing that knowledge that serves only our selfish desires and for using what we have learned to exploit and hurt others. Cleanse our guilty hearts of the apathy that we feel for searching out the deeper truths of your word. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer that we may put self aside and rejoice in the truth that builds up. Heavenly Father, send the Spirit of Jesus into our hearts, so that like the Bereans of old, we eagerly learn of you. 
as the deer pants for the streams of water, may we be instilled with a longing to explore the mysteries of your grace. Holy Spirit, increase in us the knowledge of your truth. As you sent your Son among us as the Word made flesh, so bless the efforts of schools, colleges, and seminaries to train those who proclaim your presence among us in word and sacrament. Holy Spirit, instill in us a desire to teach others the wisdom of your ways. God of light, give to the church renewed wisdom and fresh understanding that the message of your salvation may shine ever brighter in this dark age. Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love so that others may see our good deeds and praise our Father in heaven. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions in silent prayer. Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth so that at the name of Jesus, every knee may bow. May your peace, which transcends all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn number 283, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. On nothing less than Jesus.
sinking sand. Please rise. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and inwardly digest them, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 May be seated for the closing Good morning. God's blessings on our day. And if you do have copies of the parish postings, please see some of those things that today's door collection, by the way, is included. The mission is to provide direction, comfort, and hope by sharing God and his love with individuals. And it's called the Lutheran Institutional Ministries. Also, WCUB Broadcast is uh, doing that today. The memory of Elmer and Adeline Rather are included in John and Jeanette Malik. Also, the family in your prayers is also included too. So some of these things are reminding us of this. 
Yvonne Stock, a member of our congregation, is included this that uh, she says, um, my mom, Dorothy Kudik, passed away on August 31st, 2020, and she has that obituary. Now, that's in the Wisconsin Synod, Pastor Carl Schultz, who is going to be having his service tomorrow on Monday, and that's in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, about that time, I think, uh, around that, that period. Uh, we also have that prayer last Sunday, too, as um, Ross Zimmerman's father is also uh, a prayer that we had for him, too. That was David Zimmerman. He was 93 years old. What are some of these things that remind us about coming to the time of the end of our world? Well, being put into the grave is something that we can remind us that we have faith in Jesus and look forward to eternal life. Funerals are not just in the past. The present is as long as our bodies decay. But the future is our hope in eternal life and everlasting life in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us appreciate some of those things. We do have Sunday school coming up on September 13th. And if you've got the parish postings, there is that listing. God's blessing on our day.